Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to everyone around the world. Welcome back to another One Piece video featuring your boy, Dolph Flamingo. Get ready for the final variation of Birdcage for OP06 until EB comes out, in which then we'll dive into it and I can show you the brand new purple cards that are actually going to make this deck a little bit better. But for right now, we're going to take a peek at a Kaido variant that I've been working on. People keep questioning whether or not I have tried this card out in Doflamingo. How do I feel about it? Give it a shot. Let me know. All that sort of thing. Personally, he's okay. Like, he's not necessarily something like I would include in my main deck. But he's he's fun at best. I much prefer like Douglas Bullet over Kaido if I would had to include one or the other. But he does allow Birdcage to basically extend for permanent. He just, the deck doesn't have a lot of ramp to make it valuable you know what i mean or viable sorry that's the word i'm looking for but in any case we're gonna do a little breakdown real fast i'm talking about some matchups and stuff you guys have to be on the lookout for now we do keep some of the normals here with the eight 2k counters the baby five and viola so having so many cards in the deck that don't have you know non-counter can be a detriment depending on what you're playing against but I've learned that playing into decks such as Gekko Moria, Yamato, it's not necessarily as bad as you think. Considering the fact that you guys have Birdcage, we can lock down the early and the mid game. Their late game cards, is Ho uh, for example, Yamato is Ho Hody Jones, and you might see like Eustace Kid, or you might see uh, uh, Zoro, right? When it comes to Gekko Moria, it's just Gekko Moria. Everything else can be locked down with Birdcage. Dofi still has the same problem as he's had before with Sakazuki being a thing, so you don't really get a lot of have bodies on board, generally speaking. But you can still win the matchup, ideally, and that's all thanks to rush cards such as Kaido here and Hody Jones and be able to lock down the board Salinos. But you have to basically get the best draw that you can. Now, Gekko Moria does have access to things like Ice Age and stuff, so he can deal with these a little bit better than uh, other decks such as like Perona. But I feel, especially coming from like my locals, Perona isn't really played all too much compared to the other variants. Your locals may be different. You may be playing Perona on Sim here as well. But from my experience, I play very little into Perona versus every other matchup here. Not that she's not an issue, but realistically, she's not so much a problem for Birdcage Doflamingo. Due to the fact, again, we locked down everything. We just have to be mindful of their Dofi. And considering we have Kid, and they have very less removal than Gekko Moria, our Kid kind of bodies that matchup. Dofi can't really lock it down. And with Kid being able to go up to 10k with a couple 2k counters and events, you're chilling most of the time. But in any case, into the matchup that's probably going to matter most for a lot of people, because you're going to see this a lot, and I think everybody is going to see this a lot. And that's Yamato. Yamato is very difficult to deal with if you don't draw properly. Going first or second, it matters not to you into this matchup, as long as you guys have a couple blockers in hand. If you notice, we've added in Rosanante. Normally, Motherless, don't generally use him. Not that he's bad. You just didn't really... I didn't feel you needed him as much as you do now. He is vital to this matchup and that's simply due to the fact that kid can play down either a monet or play down a rosinante here when he hits when he hits the board right as long as you guys take the hits in the early game and get up to eight get up to nine dawn you're chilling usually considering your events and then the kid and the birdcage can literally carry you guys all the way to end you just have to have key pieces in order for you to do that the baby five is going to search out for your birdcage most importantly, unless you already start with it in your hand. If you do, you're searching out your Sugars, your Diamantes, and your Rosinantes. These will be your key pieces to winning the matchup most of the time. Sugar will stop Hody Jones. So ideally, if a Yamato decides to drop down a Hody on 10 Dawn, that gives Yamato 3 Dawn left to float over, right? Which will probably go on leader. Hody will try to swing for 10, but it can't due to the fact that Sugar rests him. And, considering Birdcage is locking down everything else, Yamato doesn't get a lot of use out of the leader effect to give other cards rest at dawn because they can't swing. 
Now, depending on what variant of Yamato you're playing against, maybe it's a, um, a Skypea variant, Sugar will be ideal here as well because you can rest down the Ohm and or the Holly and stop them from actually making an advance on you. Now, do keep in mind, though, as soon as you take the first couple hits, this ability is live, right? It's so much easier to allow her to take damage from you and then set up your late game plays with the Rosinante and the kid because no matter what happens with the kid, it cannot be rested by Hody Jones. They still have to deal with it. The same thing with the sugar. Once this hits board, this will rest the sugar, but sugar's ability is still always active, so this can stop the Hody Jones from doing its thing. And then you have the usual, the seven cost kid here, which is gonna be a staple in all my variants, and I think just in general for Birdcage. It just allows you to extend Birdcage almost indefinitely. With the help of Kaido, you can do that, but I don't necessarily think you need it. We were just doing a little bit of playtesting here, and I wanted to show you guys a variant that's been working for me. I will show you guys the finished product, as I normally would, at the end of the video. Now, we have added in, or we have added back Hell's Judgment. This was in my previous version here on the channel for OPO6, and with further testing, I still think this is one of the better cards in Birdcage Dofi. It helps you slow down the matchups for you, especially for rush decks. It allows you to slow down like Russian Nell, the the Hody Jones. If you don't have a sugar on board, this allows you to make it a little bit easier for you to deal with. If you don't have sugar and you have an event in hand or what have you, because it's possible you might have three Dawn that turn. Maybe you're preparing for it. This allows you to slow down both the leader and Hody. If not, it allows you to protect yourself from the double attack from Yamato. Which is nice, right? But uh, it also extends Birdcage. And then unfortunately, considering all the no counter cards in the deck, with the inclusion of the Kaido here, you have to include either the zero cost Gum Gum Jet Gatling, or you have to include the zero cost for green. I prefer... I prefer this one. Just because if you get it off trigger, you can ramp up quicker than your opponent and get, get Kid down. You know what I mean? As quickly as you possibly can. Because if you guys already have the 7 cost, this doesn't matter if you get it off the trigger. Because this will still extend Birdcage indefinitely. But, this one helps you get the kid on board. Now, of course it's situational, but you must have the 0 cost. It doesn't, doesn't matter which one it is, because you have all of these non-counterable cards in the deck. And then I've included Gamma Knife. This is something in which I also included in my main version of Dofi. And again, we'll get to it later. This is a situational card in which it's just a placeholder right now. The reason being why it's here is you will be playing against Peronas, Yamatos, everything that has Doflamingo here, or Eustace Kid, Hody Jones. This allows you to deal with them. Because we don't have any other way of swinging over these. You know what I mean? Without stacking all of our Dawn, essentially. But, with Gamma Knife, we can easily remove the kid and bypass it. Now, again, this is a placeholder until EB comes out. When EB comes out, we will be using Ragnarok. This is probably going to be a purple staple for a lot of purple decks. Because this card's pretty disgusting. It allows you to deal with every card in the format outside of the 9-drop Kaido and Yamato, right? Doflamingo, that's about it. You're killing Gekko Moria, you're killing Hody Jones, you're killing uh, Eustace Kid, Katakuri, and of course you can't kill a 10-drop you know, mom, but every other problem, this will deal with it for you. For 5 Dawn, you minus 1, extends Birdcage, it does a thing, it gives you a trigger effect as well. It's pretty good. But overall, we've also kept in the Flap Threads. This is a card in which I'm not taking out of my main deck, out of this deck. Just in general, this card is very, very strong. Especially if you have a kid on board, this makes your leader 6k. With Flap Thread, you go up to 8k for the whole turn. You can make your Eustace Kid here 10k for the whole turn. It's very solid. But in any case, let's go ahead and dive into a couple games here today. And then we will take you back to the end of the deck list. I'll see you guys in a split second. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Dive into a couple games today. Come at you guys with Birdcage Do Flamingo playing into Yamato here, in which this shouldn't be a long game necessarily, depending on how we draw. But uh, for those of you guys out there who are actually interested in playing Do Flamingo, this is going to be a very difficult matchup for you if we don't draw into our Birdcage early, see some Diamantes and or Rosinantes, considering the fact how Yamato uh, double attacks us all the time. Unfortunately, here. We're going to have to take Flap Thread. We run two Flap Threads in the deck, and this could be a saving grace in the later hours. Later hours? The later stages. But we'll see how it goes. I probably should have played Sugar Down first. But then again, if they block, that's cool, because I kind of want to get pressure into them before they actually get the double attack off on me. Just in case this might be a trigger. Alright, they block out. Mm. Let's play down Sugar here. Just to have it ready on board. Yamato generally can't deal with this unless they play down like a two cost card here to rest it so Sugar's ability can do its thing and then attack into it. And we obviously knew they were just going to go nine, so it's fine. Alright, get a Punk Gibson here, which is really good. There's the Birdcage. So we're set up for the following turn. We got Pump Gibson, we have Flap Thread, another Sugar in hand. We're chilling, boys. Hmm. Let's go seven. I probably should have... I could have gone 8, but, you know, math is hard sometimes. So they're at 3. All of their triggers are generally live now. At least the Wanu ones, unless they're running other ones as well. They're at 6 Dawn. With Killer in Trash, I assume this is going to be a Kid variant, so they might be playing a Fortress build. Which will be a problem unless we can draw into, like, a Gamma Knife or have a good curve into Kaido. So we'll see. We can rest the Hiyori. Weirdly enough, they take the bottom life instead of the top life there. Which is strange, because if that is a zero cost event or an Amaru, you'd rather not take that off the life instead, you know? There's a Monet. I assume they kill Sugar. Yep. And that's fine, because we have another one. We could rest the Monet with the uh, Punk Gibson. But that's probably not worth it. I assume they'll just block my attack or whatever. Which is totally okay. But they know that we have the Birdcage, so I don't know how they'll do this. There's seven Dawn. Let's go five to face here. Because we can play down a Sugar and rest the Monet here if we want to. Let's go ahead and do the Baby Five. We'll take the 2k. I wish we can take the Gamma Knife, but of course we cannot, unfortunately. Would be pretty good to get ready for the kid. Let's go 5 here. I'd imagine they take this hit just in case of a trigger. Yep, cool. You're so good at this game. Um, hmm. Dang, that sucks, man. Makes me feel like we should have waited and just did the sugar in case they got a trigger, but Birdcage is still alive. We're, we're still fine. We have the kid in hand, we have the Kaido in hand, we're chilling. Five, six, seven, eight. So they do have eight Dawn. So they can play down a kid and give it two Dawn with Yamato's leader ability. But that would be their whole turn in this scenario. And then we'd only have to block out or play one flap thread to protect ourselves from leader and Nekomamushi. Very aggressive. Let's go ahead and punk Gibson and Nekomamushi. I guess we'll drop a 2k. That sucks, man. I wasn't ready to do that that early, but I was hoping they'd at least play down something else on board and then attack. Oh, they did, but what the heck is this? Okay. That's not bad. I guess that helps them get around blockers and stuff, which is pretty, pretty nice. Don't know how I feel about it, really, but hmm, maybe something worth trying. Alright, so we're at 9 Dawn. We can play down the Sugar and the Kid here. That way we can extend the Birdcage for the following turn and make our leader 6k. And then we'll have the Flap Thread to go up to 8. Go 6 to face. Again, I messed up here again. 
I should have played the kit first and then attack, then drop the sugar. Just in case it was a trigger. So here's the Hody. Sugar will counterplay this. I guarantee you they forgot about it. Just because Sugar is rested, boys and girls, does not mean her ability doesn't work. It's always in play, no matter what. Unless they drop, like, the, um, the purple card. I think it is a 5-drop, or it's a 7-drop. I think it's a 5-drop. It's called Zephyr, right? That will nullify all effects of a card, so... Sugar will still go off first, but still. Not bad. We were able to actually get out of that attack, which is pretty solid. Let's see. My brain is telling me to just stack 10 Dawn on Kid and go for phase. But I don't know how many, how many counters they have or zero cost events in hand. If I do this, and we fail, we just lose next turn with the Yamato and the Hody swings. So we don't have enough counter in hand to protect that. So I guess we'll just play Diamante down, just in case. And if they decide to drop another Hody Jones, or they have uh, Reject, we should be okay. Let's save the two Dawn here for Flap Thread and go 9 to face here. Do the leader ability. And we should be chilling. So the 9k in at 8k. Essentially, I could make it a 10. So I should get two 2k counters at least, and then a 1k. And then maybe... Oh, okay, hold on, wait, wait. Two of them. Okay. I think we're good here. If they had to do that, that must mean they don't have a lot of counter in hand, or they were saving the Hody Jones, because I didn't see the Hody come down for that event. Let's go eight. Nice, let's go boys. We got there. So after all this time playing Birdcage Del Flamingo, I come to realize that a lot of people have trouble into Katakuri. For whatever reason. I don't I don't understand it. If Okay, we, we got it. If we draw into Birdcage, right? In the early game, we control early to late, right? If we can get a kid or a zero cost event, I don't know why. That zero cost event is in here. In any case, if we control the bird cage, we control early to mid game. The kid, the eight drop kid, will allow you to carry the rest of the way. That is your key piece, generally in this matchup, considering yellow does not have a way to remove the eight drop kid other than attacking into it. But you have to still keep applying pressure to Katakuri every single turn this isn't like the yamato match where they're going to go nine to face nine to face and threaten double attack every turn so you don't really need to always rely on the baby five to get the blockers but they are nice to have really hmm drop down a gadetsu just to get rid of my blocker here is crazy sweet we got another one love to see it this is still going to hit me for 7k, though. I can't punk Gibson the Gadetsu here either, so, uh... Hmm. This is about to be a feel-bad moment. Okay, never mind. Never mind. We got a kid. Thanks for leaving that on top. I appreciate you. Let's play this out on curve. And uh, this game right now is probably a wraps, to be fair. Going up to 6k... With one 2k counter, we'll stop Katakuri's swings entirely. He'll have to invest more Dawn on himself to actually be able to do anything. That block blocker Sanji is irrelevant here. Two Dawn's active. We can punk Gibson the Sanji. Because I assume he's not going to attack with it. And if he's smart here, he will attack with leader first. Okay. That's crazy. Actually, you know what? Let's not do that. Let's wait. We'll just drop a 2k here. Or the Momo. Not Momo, but Mone. Sorry. And we'll save the Punk Gibson for the leader swing. Because I would think he would go 7 or 8 here, maybe. 
He has eight Dawn left, so it's a potential to play down a, a Linlin. They didn't draw the Linlin. They got a 2k counter. Another Pudding hits the board. There's the Linlin. So they're at eight Dawn right now. So that means the seven cost is not going to come down next turn if they have the 10 cost in hand. Because that would just seem a little bit counterproductive. And if that's the case, Katakuri is swinging at me for five and he can't hit me due to kid. So we're chilling, boys. This does feel bad, though, because we have to get rid of a 2k or a blocker here. I expected him to attack with Katakuri. Oh, Nami with the Banish. Oh, well, little do you know. Peeking at my life again. Hmm. 9k. Let's go ahead and do the, uh, do the thing. We can rest the Onami. So the whole board is locked down now with Birdcage. We took no damage there at all through any of those exchanges, which is crazy to me. We're at 8 Dawn. We could essentially get down the kid on board, which is totally okay. Because we know he's going to drop down Big Mom the following turn. And this will get us a blocker here. So we can at least block the Katakuri swing if he decides to play the 7-drop as well. Let's just go 5 here. I don't want to activate Kid's Effect. That way we can go into Dofi in the following turn. And he should be paying attention to this too. He, but you never know. Of course. Four cards left to go. So Big Mom should hit the board. So that means he has two cards in hand with no counter power. The 7 cost and the 10 cost. Assuming he has it. We should be able to go for game next turn. Depending on what these triggers are going to be. So there's the mom. That's five. We have to take at least one of these hits here. Cool. We could save our blocker. Now with the big mom being on board, she still has to go through the kid before he can get to me. Ooh. I mean, we can play down two kids here. Let's do that. Give them both Dawn. And then uh, now he has a bigger problem to deal with. Go 9 to face. We can still extend Birdcage here too, by the way. That way nothing gets popped and he can't get any draws from Peril Sparrow. Hmm. Okay, it's Kikunojo, which does suck. There's the 2k counter, so that means he has... Still has a 7 cost in hand. So the three other cards possibly have counter power. Three swings this turn. Ooh, he doesn't know how this works, does he? Even if he decides to go all in to kid, he won't kill the kid due to the Rosinante's effect. He needed to have, like, Reject or Thunderbolt there. His Big Mom is going to remove one of them at the very least. And then the other category will swing for 9. So we have the 2k counter to protect that one. I think that's all we need for game here. Overall, not too bad. Not too bad. This is probably going to be a super tough game. Like, this had to be my mulligan hand out of all things. Three no counter cards, a Rosen, not a Rosen, not a Diamante, and a Birdcage. This is gonna suck. Hmm, boy. I mean, we have the late game here sealed if we make it there. But we don't have a seven cost kid. No Kaido. I mean, I guess I'd rather have the eight cost kid instead of the Kaido in hand, so, but still. She got herself a 2k counter. I guess we'll just do the thing. We'll kill this. We'll pass it up. That's all we can do. Sugar is actually going to be a pretty good into this matchup too, by the way. Considering the fact that she has to rest it with leader. And then pop a four cost to kill it. Oh, nice. Two Rosinantes here. She has no idea. Now what do? This is when we start chilling. Considering the fact that we only have to watch out for Moria and Doflamingo. We should be fine. Oh, there's the Dofi. Another one, apparently. 
What else could you be looking for, though? Okay, zero cost event. Not bad. The Rosinante. Let's go ahead and guard out. Unfortunately, we have to get rid of the 2k here. That's just a logical sense. Another kid. So on 9 Dawn, we can actually play the kid, give it a Dawn, and throw down a Rosinante here. Which would be pretty solid. We just need to find a way to extend Birdcage for this matchup. If we're able to at all. We might actually have to take some hits here, but we'll see. Because having Diamante here with Birdcage up is going to be make is going to make for a solid attacker, at the very least. Our hand is super high rolly at this moment. There goes a Sabo, which is nice. We want to deal with that. So that's a given they can deal with Diamante here if they want to. Or at least the next turn they can. Another Rosinante. Let's get a kid down on board, do the thing. I probably shouldn't have attacked there. But I doubt they will drop a do Dofi on just my leader. But maybe they'll lock down us both, which is fine, because I can just restand the Diamante, so it's not really an issue. So let's see if Corona takes the bait here. Hopefully she decides to go for it though. If she plays down Dofi here, she can lock down our Diamante and our leader. Which is totally fine, because we can just attach a Dawn to him and restand him. Okay, minus one cost. Alright. Never mind. Actually, you know what? We're good, we're good, we're good. Because Rosinante, we can just pop him instead of the Diamante here. We're chilling, boys. We're chilling. The silly goober. It says she destroys it, though. Okay, cool. I can still activate the ability. Alright, we're good. We're hanging in there. Seemed a bit of a weird play to me, but okay. Like, Rosinante is here, you use it in your deck as well. How do you not know that? 8k here. Let's go ahead and give him a 1k. And then we're chilling. Actually, Monet's pretty good here. We can actually force the Ryuma to be rested if she decides to swing with leader. Or we can Dofi this and lock down the Porcelino due to the fact that we don't have a way to extend Birdcage here. But if we do that, we cannot use the Kid to take the hits for me the following turn. Let's get down another Kid here. The other option was to drop the Dofi. But if we drop the Dofi, we couldn't put the Dawn on the Kid to make Kid be able to take the attacks for me. This way we're able to get down another Rosinante and I can Dawn up both Kids. Or we can restand the Diamante here. Which would be kind of nice. That way he's not popped off with Birdcage. So let's do it like this. We'll go 8 over here. I assume you she would save this, right? I remembered she did have a zero cost event. So hopefully that was the only one. So now I have to deal with just 3 attackers this turn. I'm not including Borsalino. I'm just assuming that the leader will swing this turn. So that was a definite. Hmm. How do I feel about this one? No, no, just let him go. Just in case she does like the Ice Age events and all that sort of thing. Okay. That does nothing for you, but alright. There's the kid. Would've been nice having that earlier. If we some happen, or somehow happen to survive, we can play down a kid and a birdcage in the following turn. Well, we'll see if we'll get there. Let's do some damage here. It's 9k. We don't have much here in counter power. So that's 10. That one's gone. Another Doflamingo. That sucks. I mean, we got the Punk Gibson, though. Hmm. How do we get out of this? If we Dofi this, we lock down their Dofi. If we play a Birdcage here as well. I think Dofi's probably the better play. Let's just do the thing. That's a lot of damage coming my way here. At least 
at least three swings, bare minimum. But we do have a Punk Gibson to be able to stop the Ryuma and or the Borsalino. At the very least. And then we can potentially go for game next turn, unless they have a third Del Flamingo. Sure. I'm not sure why you decided to add Dawn to that, though. Oh, wait, never mind. I understand. Considering that Punk Gibson would have just made me a 10k. 8k come in the face. They've got 6 Dawn left, so maybe they have another blocker here in hand. If they do, that would give Leader 7k. So we get a Diamante from that, which isn't too bad. It's not something we need right now to close the game out. But I was, yep, they did it. Cool. I was hoping they would try to push for game if I didn't guard out of any of these attacks, and they decided to do so. So now we definitely win the game here. Guard out here at Punk Gibson. I'm sorry, buddy. You tried. Even if they would have taken that slowly, we were still going to get out of it. Because we were able to rest the Borsalino if they decided not to attack it. And that leader was only be able to swing at me for 9. So, no, it swung at me for 11. And we still had the counter for it anyway. Let's go 10 to face here. Because if I decide to clear board, I lose the game. There's 2. We'll probably do one more game after this one, then we're going to call it a wraps and go back to the deck profile and see the things that I'm going to change and all that sort of thing. But overall, I'm still having fun with Birdcage, of course. I mean, there's not, not there's never been a moment in which I don't have fun playing Doflamingo. I just feel like right now, we still need a, a lot more cards to make this deck a little bit more... Hmm, a little bit more, I guess, strong, I guess, if that's the word. A little more strong. There we go, English. But... We got Hody Jones in OPO6, which really, really strengthens this deck. It makes it be able to do a lot of things that opponents aren't ready for. But at the end of the day, that's all we've gotten. EV is when this deck can actually come up to its own, because we get cards in which we can search for a two-cost event that allows us to give 4k to our leader, right? And then it allows us to search on top of that, which is really, really cool. So it allows us to get Birdcage a lot easier other than just relying on Baby 5. But in any case, we're going to get into this game here and see what we can do. I am just going to constantly be aggressive to this Moria. And I don't necessarily care what he decides to drop on board. I kind of treat this matchup kind of like Sakazuki, to be fair. Everything I'll throw on board, he's just going to remove it anyway. If I can counter out, I'll counter out. Unfortunately... Both of our hands were trash. The first one we start off with two kids, and this one we get a Hody, a Kaido, and a Delphamingo. So I mean, what do you want me to do? And this is one of the downsides to including Kaido into this list. Like I said, everybody's insane, try out Kaido, do this or do that. I'm trying him out. I am not so much a fan because he takes up slots in the deck that can be other Don Quixote pirate family members, or Anything that has counter to it, whether it's a spider web, a mock vice, some other sort of blocker, something. But instead he takes up three to four slots in the deck, in which I'm just, I'm not a big fan for. And then I feel with the seven cost kid, that's really all you need. That, queen, either law, uta blocker, you're chilling. But... Kaido is not bad, considering the fact that he does minus the 5. We are killing some threats on board. Being in this matchup, there's not a whole lot of cards that you care too much to drop a Kaido down and pop, right? Like the Absalon. The moment you pop a Absalon just gives Gecko Moria another turn to just recycle and put it back on board. So, when it comes to playing Birdcage Doflamingo, this is why I thought about, like, Birdcage in this matchup? is fantastic because they have to pop the Absalon themselves or just play a card over top of it to get it to go to the trash. Because the moment it swings on me, I'm never ever going to attack into it. That way it stops him from having to get the opportunity to recycle it. And look, look, if Kaido was anything else here, just maybe a 2k, maybe something else, like a blocker that we had on board previously, we'd have been chilling. But we have to give up Hody Jones here. And we draw into another one, which is really, really good, because it allows me to force cards to rest for Birdcage, which is pretty solid. But how do I go about this and be safe? 
I think realistically we're gonna take at least three attacks next turn. Maybe four if he decides to go in with Borsalino. We have nine Dawn. Let's go smack in again. There's not much else we're gonna be able to do about it. Let's go nine to face. We'll save five up and play Diamante down. Maybe he'll survive a turn. Maybe he'll be able to take a block for me. Uh-huh. Goodness, three cards on that. So he has two Absalons in trash now. So there's no reason for me to play down Diamante. He's just going to pop it for free and get another body on board. So we're going to have to take these three hits as well. Unless we get a nice trigger here. Any anything can make me survive. Hopefully a Punk Gibson on the first one. That'd be great. But that's probably not going to happen. As long as we don't draw into any of our Kaidos here, or like another Doflamingo off trigger, I think we'll be fine. Wow, okay. He even goes on on Sindri. So I'm guessing if he's pre stacking Dawn, he doesn't really play anything for three, right? Unless he's going to save two for the leader effect, so he might as well just stack one of those on somebody else. I guess you could have the two cost blocker. Okay, cool. Yep, thought so. Another Diamante. I mean, that's okay, I guess. My man over here stalling. Crazy. Seven. Please? Why couldn't you be previously? Like, what the heck? Alright, so at least we have Punk Gibson for this one. It's kind of irrelevant now, but hey, what are you going to do? He's got five cards left in hand. I think we can still come back here. It's going to be a little bit iffy, but I think we can do it. How do we extend Birdcage here without popping and allow us to continuously get a blocker on board? Because if I play Kaido here, we kill the Kuzan and then we run the Kaido into the Borsalina, right? But then we have no blockers for, I guess, the Moria and the Cinder if he decides to go wide. I think doing the Kaido is the wrong play. Alright, hear me out. So, in any other circumstance, I would probably never ever do this. But considering the fact that what our hand is, absolutely trash right now, we're going to have to Gamma Knife. We're going to Gamma Knife the Borsalino. I am not going to attack into it. I know it's crazy, but I'd rather get pressure on Moria here, considering Burricade's just going to shut him down anyway. And then we can actually do some damage and play down Diamante and hope that he can survive at least one turn. If he doesn't survive a turn, he'll spend resources on it to try to get rid of it, which is cool because that's less Dawn from Sindri and Moria to attack me, right? All right, cool, we get a damage in, we'll pass it up. So we extend Birdcage for at least a turn here. I'm guessing we're gonna have to either draw into a kid or do the Kaido thing next turn. Maybe this this last trigger here could be like uh, Hell's Judgment or something, which would be really good. Okay, Great Eruption. Hey look, two Great Eruptions. So he's going to smack me, play Absalon, kill Diamante, which gives him 6 Dawn left to play with, or 4 Dawn left to play with, sorry. So what does he play on 4 Dawn here? Another Borsalino maybe? Got to counter out. Hmm. I want to throw away Kaido, but he is our only way of extending Birdcage right now. Cody might be able to rest the Absalon or whatever he decides to play here. So unfortunately, we gotta get rid of that. And if we make it to the late game, we have a Dofi in hand. Or at least if we make it to the 10 Dawn turn. What do you play here? Rebecca too, huh? And he gets the Sabo from Trash. Oh, there's a kid. 
I don't think we can play kid right now though. If I take this down, we still get no blocker and he's gonna attack me for game. Hmm. Realistically, I think our only option is to drop Kaido. Then we have to kill the attacker here on board. Well, I guess, let's do the thing. If the last trigger can be anything, like 1k or 2k, we're good. Other than that, I, I think he's just going to cook us. Yep. So we do a damage, or take Rebecca out. Oh wow, okay. Alright. My man's greedy. So we don't have to deal with any rush units. He either goes all in or, or removes the Kaido here. Okay, never mind. Alright. He saved up 5 Dawn. So he's going to play Sabo down. There's no way he dons up Rebecca here, ideally, if he saved 5 Dawn. Yep. Even though our hand is terrible, but realistically I think, you know, a smart player would have done the exact same thing. Otherwise he loses next turn. This should be game. It's five. If he can counter out of this, but he can't counter both other swings, I don't think. With six cards in hand. Unless they're all 2k counters. So that's one. Alright, Kaido, bring it home. Sorry we're talking trash about you, buddy. You're you're fantastic. Man, definitely stolen. I'm lying though. I do, I'm not a fan of Kaido here. I'm just not. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but we'll talk about it. We'll do one more one more game and we'll dive into the deck list. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this will probably be the last game for the day when it comes to Dolphy Birdcage. So I apologize if you guys are expecting a lot more games today. If you're interested in seeing the final version of the list, of course we will dive into it after this game, in which that'll be my last version for Birdcage until EB comes out and OP07. Really? All right, we'll block here. In any case, we run into another Yamato. So, I mean, I guess we'll, we might as well just post this one too, right? Because this is gonna be a deck that you guys are gonna see everywhere. And it has one of the most flexible builds that you can do out of every other leader in OP06. Considering like Reiju is kind of one dimensional, Moria is kind of one dimensional. I think between Yamato and Perona, they have like the most flexibility. Red, purple, Uta, we, we never see. So we don't really have to worry about that too much. And then we have a bunch of rogue decks that come back in OP06 that do a little bit better. Like Crocodile, Queen, all that sort of thing. But in the last couple days, all I've seen is Yamato's, basically, pretty much. Like, I'll run into a couple Peronas here and there. Very little Gekko Morias. I've actually seen more pu purple Kaidos than I've seen Sakazukis in the past couple days, which is kind of crazy to me. But anyway, let's dive back into this game. I probably should have played Birdcage here, just in case, but I figure that if we drop the kid, we go up to 6k and it might be a little bit easier for me to guard out of this attack. I just expected them to dot up and swing, but alright. Oh, this works for me. They get an Amaru as well. This is probably some sort of Skypea variant. Oh wow, y'all are super aggressive, aren't you? Hmm... We could use a zero cost event here, but I'd have to get rid of a sugar. It's probably better to just go ahead and Hell's Judgment. We lose a Dawn, we can extend the Birdcage that we can just drop next turn. We stop the Shura, even though he can't hit me, but it's better than dropping the zero cost event, right? And the 2k plus a, plus a sugar. Let's do the thing here. 
And this is why this card is just so good into like a matchup like this. Yamato generally is hitting between 7 to 9k, unless they're just stacking all Dawn on the leader. And Hell's Judgment kind of helps you even that out, especially when you have a 7 cost kid on board. Let's go ahead and go 8k to face. Nice, no trigger. Try this again. Okay. And we get a Kaido here, which is pretty huge. We have Sugar on board now to rest Hody if she decides to drop a Hody down on board. The downside to it is we have two Dawn active, and most of the time I've learned in these matchups that they kind of just rest our Dawn as Dofi, which is totally okay. But it's only it's only fine considering we have a Sugar on board. And that's like the worst case scenario is a Hody hitting the board and then an Amaru on the Yamato. Or something like a reject. Hence what just happened, unfortunately. Hmm. Five done left. Go six. I'm guessing that might be an Okiku or Kikinoju or a blocker of some sort. Okay. Ohm. That's a board to deal with. Okay. Thankfully, we have another sugar the rest of the Ohm here. We can play down Diamante as well to have a blocker, which she cannot deal with unless they draw into another reject or they have Hody. Nice. We're not going to use the effect, by the way. That way we can drop a Kaido for the following turn and go for game. Got seven in hand. This is it for them here, unless they have Momo. Actually, never mind. Momo can't really bounce anything back here. I think we're chilling. Yeah, they're going for face. We'll rest that. That feels a little bad. I feel like sometimes forget, or sometimes people forget how Sugar works. Even though she's rested, her ability will still be active. I feel like I mentioned that in every single Dofi video, and people still ask me about it. It's kind of crazy. So he's killing Sugar. That's fine. She did her job. Dog can swing for seven here. Yep. I don't think we need him here, to be fair. I mean, realistically, we probably should have zero cost and then got rid of the kid. So if we lose or we don't have enough here, that's probably right there that misplay would have done it. Let's take the hit. There's a Dofi. No trigger here. Three Dawn left. Okay. Hey, let's go, boys. Either the Hody or the Kaido would have ended it here, so it's fine. Unless they had, like, an Elthor in hand. Let's see. What do you got? Zero cost. Okay. Did they have an Elthor? No. Nice. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the end of the video. I appreciate everybody who's made it this far. Thankfully, it's not over an hour this time. It's kind of crazy. I mean, it's, it's, we're very, very close, but, you know, it eats throughout. In any case, this has been a leader in which I've very much enjoyed since he came out in OP04. Unfortunately, we are in OP06 and times have changed. There's a lot of other new decks out there who are doing a much better than Doflamingo, unfortunately. Even... The OG himself, Blue Do Flamingo, is in a much better spot than this one here currently. And OP07, this leader actually comes back and gets a lot of new cards, a lot of new staples, becomes relevant again. So I'm very excited that Dofi is still going to be a thing, even in the next set, regardless of if Birdcage is, you know, one of my favorite additions to the Do Flamingo Pirates. Unfortunately, or Don Quixote Pirates, why did I say that? But unfortunately, when it comes to this leader here, he hasn't got very much support outside of green, right? Because that's where all his cards are at. Now, when it comes to purple, it's generally splashing cards into it to make the deck work or work more consistently. Such as the kids, the Hell's Judgments, or maybe the Blast Brafts, Queens, Laws, Uthas. 
things of that nature. But it's mainly a green focused build. With the addition of Hody Jones, this has made this deck actually quite strong considering the fact that we actually have a, like an end game pusher, I guess you would say, or like a closer or you have that card that can go for game essentially. Because Hody can come on board, rest two things and go for face, which is very, very nice. It's like having essentially a rush Luffy that can rest down or rest the blockers and go face, which is pretty cool. But... Unfortunately, in OP06, this deck does still have to deal with Sakazuki until OP07 comes out. And then once that happens, we can swap back over, have fun with Dofi still, and have a good time. Because he doesn't get that many new options in OP07, but he does get some cool things in EB, which is pretty nice. In which in EB and OP07, of course we will be diving back into him a little bit and seeing what some of the new cards can do. But in EB, we gain access to Ragnarok, and this is Purple's only tool of popping big units on board. This allows you to deal with everything in the format that's currently relevant, besides Big Mom, essentially. We can actually remove the useless kid, we can get rid of the Hodies, the 7 cost kids, and go about our day. The Katakuris as well. The biggest ones that we can't touch are going to be the Kaidos, the Doflamingos, the Big Moms, the Yamatos. Everything else, we're chilling. But a lot of green decks right now are running the A-cost kid, and you need an option to remove this. So this is probably going to be one that you will see in a lot of purple decks. Be it in Birdcage or Flamingo, it does two things. It gets rid of our problems, and it extends Birdcage, let alone it has a trigger to allow us to ramp up a Dawn as active, which is pretty good. But overall... This has been my final take on Birdcage for OP06. I will show you guys my finished list in which I will be taking to locals, not this upcoming week, but the following. Because this upcoming week I have to get more practice in with Yamato because I am going to be going to the Hampton. So, you know, I, I gotta, gotta be on my game, you know what I mean? But overall, go ahead and show you guys this real quick. Yes, I play a lot of Dofi. It be what it be. The final variant for OP06 will be this for the time being this is what i will be taking to the next upcoming locals not again not this one but the following one and there are some cards in here that i understand not everybody wants to shell out the money for such as the queens which is totally understandable you can swap these out for utha and or law and you'll be okay but personally if you're able to get your hands on these this will help you out tremendously and not only allows you guys to draw more cards to make sure you can see your sugars and your rosinantes or get your pieces for late game such as your kids your hodies or your doflamingos or kid it also extends birdcage is a solid blocker can be withstood with spiderweb if need be which makes this guy a 10k blocker so it's pretty solid and then of course we will be including and keeping this card in the deck which is hell's judgment and flap threat Flap Thread is one of my favorite cards that has come out of OP04 for Doflamingo. It allows your leader to become 8k, assuming you have a kid on board. It also allows your other kid to become a 10k for the whole turn, which is very, very strong. But with the inclusion of OP06, we also gain access to Hody Jones. So this card is very, very strong for green, in which I would highly advise you guys to slap in your Dofi decks. Because it does so many things for it that you didn't have access to before. It allows you to rest blockers, such as like Borsalino and Sabos, and go for game and those matchups that you really need to push. But other than that, we also included Rosinante. This hasn't been in all of my list, but as of OP06, it's highly, highly needed. I talked about it earlier and how strong this card is right now when you have to deal with things like Perona, Gecko Moria and Yamato. Now Sakazuki can bottom deck this so it doesn't get its full effect, but every other deck, generally speaking, outside of blue has trouble removing this card, especially if there's a kid on board. But overall, this is what I've been cooking up when it comes to Doflamingo. I do hope you guys give this one a shot. If you haven't tried a variant like this, if you tried one of my other variants, again, this is going to be my last and final updated version until EB comes out. Either way, this has been Pause Plays. Remember guys, smash the like button, 
Make sure you subscribe for your content when it comes to all things One Piece. I will catch you guys at Locals. I will see you guys at Hampton if you're going. Take care of yourselves. I'll see y'all later. <laughs>